Good morning. Good morning. I believe we're live. Uh, here we are, Energizing Yoga. And I'm just going to uh, check a couple things. Yeah, it looks like we're live. So as you join in, um, you may want to make sure that you have support. So again, make sure you have a blanket and your mat set up in a way that's comfortable for you to see. Um, the next thing is you may want to have either a block with you or if you need it, you know, some people are using cans um, out of your kitchen cupboards since we're staying at home. Uh, live from the stay at home yoga studio. Uh, and if you have a tie or a belt, you might want to grab that too. And what else? I think that's it. So gather your resources and your props and supports and meet me on the mat in just a minute or two and we will get started. Okay. Oh, I'll tell you when you come back. Okay, so hopefully um, they've changed the live a little bit, so I want to make sure that Everybody can see okay. I think you can. And all right. Good morning. So, a couple of pieces. In the last uh, week or so, I've um, had a few requests from our yoga teacher training group. And uh, one of the requests is to kind of talk about um, the bridge from the lower. Uh, biological energy centers to the um, upper spiritual uh, energy centers. So I'm going to bring that into our practice this morning. And that's that quantum shift that I spoke about, or the quantum leap, uh, as we move from the biological centers to the, the uh, higher uh, heart centers, okay, spiritual centers. Uh, where prana moves upwards instead of down and out um, for our evolution, which is perfect timing because here we are evolving in this very moment. Uh, and then the, the second request was around how to release the psoas muscle. And what's beautiful is those two, they uh, fit in perfectly because the psoas is the muscle that is um, our biological fight or flight muscle. And so it either contracts when we're afraid and it wants us to run. Um, it'll contract and get us to uh, fight. Uh, it'll also, we'll go into freeze where we're like a deer in headlights, like hope they don't see me kind of feeling, be invisible. And one of the ways to work with that freeze is social, uh, social integration. And unfortunately right now, we don't have a lot of that, right? We have it virtually, but we're not necessarily seeing each other face to face. And even when we're out and about, you may not be, um, you might notice some folks are shying away from even making eye contact and even uh, offering a smile. So there is definitely a sense of uncertainty and fear, not just in our community, although that's where we have the greatest influence uh, and in our homes and in ourselves but actually in the world, it's a global kind of feeling. So we're going to look at the psoas muscle and how can we release some of that tension that's, that's not just here right now because of what's happening right now. It's, it's a result of our patterned responses of how we've been moving through our life from the very beginning of uh, the development of this persona. And how to... Uh, take that evolutionary leap as we release our reaction through the lower centers and the psoas muscle 
um, how to take that quantum leap over the bridge of that, uh, uh, that subtle energy center that is around just kind of between the solar plexus and the heart center and how to take that quantum leap to resting and relaxing at the heart center. And so uh, I guess that's all. Um, yeah, we'll just see how we go and maybe some insights will come to you, maybe some um, deeper understanding through experience will arise. And if not, you know, we have uh, many opportunities to investigate and explore this together and on our own. So as you know, we're downloading these videos and we're saving them on YouTube. So you have access to them whenever you want. And again, we're very grateful for your participation and your uh, devotion and diligence and dedication that uh, helps each of us be a steady present for ourself and uh, for you. So, and I have one. So I'm going to move to my mat and uh, sit down there. Okay. We'll start with a, uh, a centering and I'm offering a breathing practice this morning called the Shitali breath and some of you know it and it's, it's slightly different than how you may know it so I'm going to invite you to follow my guidance as we cultivate just that uh, a beautiful breath practice to help us focus, to relax and to also to release, you know, tension in the body. Specifically, the tension that um, kind of rises up from that fight or flight response. So close your eyes. Quiet your mind as you settle into feeling yourself on the floor, in your seat. in your body without any concern or worry. Just allow yourself to be here now. And as you allow your attention to be drawn inward, Notice the quality of sitting. Being in the body. As you let your legs go. Letting them open from the hip crease. Notice the breath in the belly center. As the diaphragm massages the psoas muscle. Notice how, with your attention on the breath, you can feel that rise and fall of the breath, the release of the hip flexors, the psoas muscle. And notice how, as you relax, there's a natural kind of attunement to the center of the chest as you feel the lungs expand and contract in this rhythmic, fluid movement we experience moment to moment called breath.
So the lower energy centers are the survival biological centers. And the higher energy centers from the heart, throat, third eye, and crown gate are the spiritual centers, the evolutionary centers. Now we're going to continue with the Shitali breath, and this breath, is, this variation, is a passive inhalation through the nostrils and a slow, steady exhale through slightly parted lips, as if you're blowing through a small straw. And you're going to blow out maybe three to six inches out away from the face. And following that stream of breath all the way to the end. As you're ready for the inhalation, drawing the breath in through the nostrils, feel it rise and pass through the back of the throat and exhaling through slightly parted lips. Following that exhalation all the way to the end, a slow, steady stream of breath. Each exhalation becoming a little bit more imperceptible, a little bit softer, a little bit ethereal, really, just like a little kind of dissipating. Cooling, calming breath. We call the Shitali or the Shitali. It's deeply absorbing. You might notice yourself being drawn into the meditation as you're focused on the breath. The rest of the body becomes more at ease and relaxed. Now as the breath begins to fade, simply allow yourself to rest here in stillness, in silence.
slowly allow the hands to begin to float off of the thighs or knees. Allow the hands to begin to find their way towards one another. As you feel the hands moving through space, sensing that magnetic pressure between the palms as the hands find their way closer to each other. You're going so slow though. You, can, you might even notice that kind of magnetic pressure or maybe a throbbing or heat in front or the back of the hands. All of your attention on the hands. Noticing it feels like the hands touch before they even touch. When they finally do touch, it might even feel like they've merged into one another. And then gently begin to allow the hands to find their way towards prayer in the center of the chest. And then I want to offer you two steps for releasing reaction and relaxing the heart center. The very first one is the breathing practice that we just did, the Shitali breath. The second step is gratitude. So the moment you find yourself in reaction, what are you grateful for right now? And that will be the quantum leap, the quantum shift. From survival level biological responses to evolutionary forces. Let's chant the sound of OM together and feel that evolutionary force rise up within us. Let's take a deep breath in. And so just turning your hands towards the center of the chest. And three things that you're grateful for right now. And then allow the hands to fall down into the lap. And we're just going to continue with circling the torso. Right, so if you want, you can open the eyes or keep the eyes uh, closed. And just begin to circle the torso. I want you to go slow because right where the hip flexors are, you'll feel some, maybe some tenderness or some restriction. And as you're circling, the body is following the breath, so you're anchoring in your breathing. All right, and then we're going to switch our direction, moving the other direction. Again, you're going to notice some area of tenderness or holding. If you feel drawn to it, you can kind of stop on that tender spot and just move a little bit back and forth, kind of exploring that sensation, that area of holding. And then when it seems to kind of be teased out, you can begin to move a little bit more till you feel the next hot spot or frozen stuck place. 
And again, just lovingly teasing out that folding. find our way back into center. We're going to bring the left leg back. Okay, The left leg is going to go back. The right leg is forward. Kind of in a Z position. Just want to make sure you guys can see me. There we go. Left hand on your left hip and we're just going to rock that left hip towards the right knee. Exhaling as you press that left hip towards the right knee. So here we're loosening up the hip flexors. The hip flexors are also known as the psoas muscle, the iliopsoasis. It's a muscle that starts around the thoracic spine. T12, and it attaches uh, along the lumbar spine, comes behind the organs, and uh, then hooks in, uh, kind of connects through the pelvic region and hooks into the greater trochanter around the groin. So these gentle movements help to release a contracted psoas because we're stretching right now. This side is flexed. So if you have a can or a block handy, you can place it next to your right leg. And we're going to bring our right hand onto that can or block and press into it and lift that left hip forward. Okay? If it feels natural, you can extend that left arm up, create a nice line of energy, and maybe even a subtle back bend. Exhale, coming back down. Inhale, we're going to sweep and extend. So you can see how we're opening through the psoas muscle and also opening through the upper chest, through the sternum, the center of the heart, and back down. Exhaling. Opening. Exhalation helps to release stuck, stuck energy and contraction from that fight or flight response. Helps us cross the bridge from the survival instinct to evolutionary. Forces. Beautiful. We're going to bring the hands behind the back. Bring the feet flat on the floor. We're going to flop them over to the other side. So now the right hip is going to begin to rock towards the left. And nice and slow, the body and the breath moving together in perfect harmony. As you're rocking that right hip back and forth, notice again those areas of tenderness you're holding. And if you find an area that feels particularly tight or tender, you can kind of, kind of stop on that spot and just go a little bit back and forth. These are called micro movements. It's like we're lovingly teasing out that little frozen tender spot with tension, with breath, acknowledgement. Synovial fluid. And then bringing that left hand onto the mat to the left, uh, to the side of your left leg. You may want that block or, or book or can. And we're going to press into that 
And we're going to extend that right hip up, pressing the hip. Make a nice long line through the whole right side of the body. Exhale, coming back down. Inhale. And exhale. So I've changed the breathing practice right now. Inhale, opening. And exhale. That's it. So we're creating a little bit of a pump, pumping action. Good. Coming all the way back down. My hands are behind the back, flopping the knees right to left now. Now that we've opened up the body a little bit, hands behind the back, fingers pointing in towards the bottom, knees are apart, feet are wide, just rocking back and forth, knee flops, that's it, good. Coming back into a neutral position, we're going to move into bound ankle, so the feet will be resting towards one another. The hips are open. Again, if you need some additional support, you can tuck something underneath uh, the knees right here, maybe sitting on a blanket or a bolster. Helps with a little bit of height. Okay. And you can allow the feet to just rest together. Some of you may be able to kind of wrap the feet together, either opening them like a book. It helps to open up the hips. It can give the feet a little massage. You may want to hold on to the ankles. And we're going to press down through the seat, extend through the crown of the head. So this is a, a perfect polarity. We have the, the lower um, chakra center and the highest chakra center that's in the body or connected to this body. And so the lower center and the higher center are perfect polarity. Balance and harmony. So just visualize for a moment, if there's a contraction in the abdomen from the psoas muscle, that fight or flight response, you can feel a compression in the center of the chest and notice how the poles change, right? They, there's not a balance and harmony anymore. So how to reset? Come back into a neutral position. So that energy can flow freely between the lower center and the higher center. Through the shishunga, through the main energy channel. So from here, maintaining that steadiness, you're going to fold at the hip crease. You're extended and you're folding. You're pressing and extending. You're maintaining that natural polarity through the body. There's no contraction in the abdomen, the psoas, or the chest. It's extension, it's openness. Now as you find that place where you feel that natural stop point in the body, again, you may want to move a little bit right and left of that tender area. For me, I notice it right here in the hip crease right there. I'm just keeping my attention on it, and then I'm just sliding back and forth over it, observing, watching what happens when I simply pay attention. I notice my body opening a little bit, relaxing a little bit, more space, more ease. And I still feel a sense of balance. So that balance is that bridge. So we're not moving away from the survival instinct at all. We need that, obviously. However, are we like focused and living in that survival instinct? Or do we have a sense of balance between the polarity of the lower centers and the higher centers. 
the base of the spine and the shishunda, the top chakra, or sorry, the samsara, the top chakra, crown gates. And then slowly bring yourself back up. You'll notice maybe a surge of sensation or flood of energy moving through the body. Eyes closed, just feel that. Don't put any mind to it, just be even and steady. Feel and breathe. Open the gaze. We're going to move it to one more position here on the floor. We're going to stretch the legs out. Wide leg stretch. Okay. Toes are going to be lifted so you can feel the rooting of the sits bones down to the floor. Same thing. We've got this perfect polarity from the base to the crown. You want to maintain that connectivity and attention to that. Okay. Because Again, if we're like contracted here or overextended here, right, the balance shifts. You can even check that out for yourself while you're sitting here. If you extend like that, notice what happens. If you collapse like that, notice what happens. So in order for energy to move freely through the shishumna, through the main channel, there's a, a balance point. And that balance point is where we have that quantum leap from the biological survival instinct level to the, the evolutionary level. Okay. Breath. And gratitude. And place the hands either in front of you or on the legs, maintaining that extension begin to fold forward. Again, notice where the subtle shifts happen, where there's an overextension or a contraction. We've moved away from balance and into fight or flight. When we've moved into fight or flight reaction, we've, we've gone past our edge. Now the thing is that psoas muscle, it has a biological survival instinct. It's meant to keep us safe and alive. So if we have a, a real life threat, it's activated. And within 60 to 90 seconds from running or fighting, it's released. So if you find yourself in that reaction, even if it, there's no real biological threat, go for a walk. Um, do some yoga on the mat. You know, move the body in the lower center so that you can release that physical reactive pattern. Running is really good for that. And again, it just needs to be a minute or two. It doesn't have to be long time. Bringing yourself back to center. Again, notice if there's a natural flood of energy moving upwards. That release that is from the reactive patterns moving upwards, evolutionary forces. Allow your attention to follow the energy as it floods the upper centers. You may also feel it going down towards the feet as there's a balancing effect. Feel the breath. And relax. And then gradually begin to transition yourself. We're going to meet in a downward facing dog position. I'm going to make sure that uh, the camera is shifted just a little bit. There we go.
go. Downward facing dog. And as I mentioned, there's you know some movement called walking or running. And so I like to actually walk downward dog by lifting one leg at a time. And exhale. Now the next time you lift your right leg, we're going to step it to the top of the mat. Okay. Stepping it to the top of the mat, so you're in lunge position. I'm going to adjust the camera one more time. That's better. Pressing back through that left foot, you can feel the left side long. And as you're pressing back through the left foot, there's an extension to the chest. Through the sternum and out to the front of the head. You can use your cans or blocks on either side of you. Pick the gaze slightly forward. Kind of scan the body. Where is that balance point through the lower center and the highest center? Good. And then we're going to step that right leg back. Lifting the left leg, and then the right. Nice long strides, walking the dog. And then the next one, you lift your left leg, step it to the top of the mat. Same thing. Lunge position. Pressing back through that right heel, extending forward through the sternum and crown. Attention here, stretching out that right psoas and the extension to the chest. Look at that balance point. Beautiful. Step your left foot back to meet you right again. Downward facing dog. Now here in Downward Facing Dog, just staying here in a steady position, noticing that flexion right at the hip crease and the sternum moving towards the thighs. You're not forcing your sternum, there's not a kind of an overextension, it's just a, a very even, neutral, balanced position. This is so you can feel that natural line of energy and stay tuned to the polarity of the base of the spine and the crown gate. So that the release of the reactive patterns, the psoas, you can bring the attention, it starts to move, the energy starts to move upwards and the attention follows that. Moving from those survival level functions to the evolutionary functions spiritual. Slowly begin to find your way to the top of the mat. Hanging in a forward bend. And then bending the knees and begin to roll up your spine. Adjust the camera a little bit more. For some reason, I'm a little challenged with this today. There we go. So 
So once you're at the top, fold Tadasan. Again, you might notice a natural trendedness. Again, it's that release of sensation in the psoas muscle, and that release allows the movement of energy to move upwards towards the center of the chest. So if you feel heat, tingling, vibration, do not give it to mind, try to figure it out. Just let it flow. That's the natural direction of the body healing, restoring, balancing, and harmonizing in that evolutionary way. We're going to open the gaze and we're going to move towards uh, the center of the mat. Now, you may want to turn on your mat like this or make sure that your mat is this direction so you can see me clearly. I have a T-shape on my mat. We're going to be in the middle of this longer, wider mat. We're going to move through the moon salutation this morning. It was a beautiful pink moon today, or yesterday, two days ago, and it was stunning. So we're going to honor the full moon with uh, this beautiful moon salutation. So I'm going to invite you to bring the feet together, bring the palms together, press down through the feet, and extend through the crown of the head. Now this salutation helps to open up the psoas muscle and release those reactive patterns with the contraction or overextension of the psoas muscle. Helps to initiate the diaphragmic breathing that helps to massage the psoas muscle to help release some of those stuck energetic patterns and move that, move that energy upwards towards the chest, towards the center of the the chest into the lungs and into the heart center. Again, it's not an overextension, it's just like a balancing, it's just a natural uh, evolutionary movement, right? And bringing the palms together, center of the chest, at the heart center, press through the feet, extend through the crown. And on your inhalation, inhaling the arms all the way up, go ahead and interlace them into temple. Pressing through the feet, extending through the index finger. And from here, we're going to press the hips to the left and extend the torso to the right, moving into half moon. Pressing down into both feet, inhale back through center, go slow. Hips to the right, extend the torso to the left. Beautiful. Feeling that line of energy from the right foot all the way along to the right fingertip. Pressing through both feet, inhale up. And now we're going to step out to the right side. So big step to the right side. We're going to bring the arms down. This is a, called a goddess or a victory squat. Pressing through the feet, extending through the crown. And again, you feel that polarity from the base of the crown. Even though we're engaged, there's still a softness here and here. Full body breathing. Pressing down through the feet, extending through the arms, feet are parallel, moving into five point star. Balance and harmony. We're going to pivot on the right foot, so we're moving towards a triangle. Okay, the hip is going to go to the left, fingertips to the right. And then we're going to rotate the arms, right hands coming to the inside of the right shin, left arm up. Again, you, you, there's a slight contraction. You can feel that the right psoas is working, the left psoas is releasing. And then the, the evolutionary force through the center of the chest, so the heart region, open, steady, feeling the pulse. So you make the quantum leap, energy going up instead of down and out. And we're going to begin to rotate now, turning towards the right leg and moving towards our runner's lunge. 
but it's a straight-legged runner's lunge. You may need to adjust your foot position, maybe walking your left foot over a touch. This is where you might want to have some blocks or cans to support you. Okay. You can also rest your hands on your shin, but see if you can bring that left hip forward so that you've got an evenness through the pelvis and extension through the crown of the head, maintaining again that polarity. Now inhale and stretch that left leg back as far back as you can go into a runner's lunge. The right knee directly over the right ankle. Extending through sternum again, out through crown. And then walking the hands around to the left, turning the toes so they're pointing towards the front. Side lunge, hands are moving towards the right foot, right knee is bent. Standing through the spine. Beautiful. And then shifting yourself so that you find your way into a goddess pose. Now, you may want to have a blanket handy or blocks. So you can bring your heels down onto them. Remember, you don't want to be collapsed. So having something under your heels can help you maintain that perfect balance of polarity from the base to the crown, allowing the psoas to be engaged but not like over engaged and the heart to not be overextended. It's like there's an evenness there. So that energy flow is rich. And that subtle space between the solar plexus and the heart center. So the diaphragm can move, the muscles and the organs can be massaged. And that stored energy is released and is moving upwards. The evolutionary forces. Bringing the hands back to the mat. And we're going to extend the left leg out to the side. Side lunge. Right leg is straight, left knee is bent directly over left ankle. Extending through the spine, hands kind of below the shoulders. And then we're going to rotate around towards the left side. Pressing back through that right heel, left knee directly over left ankle. Again, you're extending through the spine, through the sternum, through the crown. Natural polarity. Beautiful. And then we're going to walk that right foot forward a little bit. Exhale. Maintaining that natural polarity. The base of the spine and the crown. Folding at the hip crease. There's a softening to the solar plexus and the sternum as the head hangs. Without contracting to the shoulders. Beautiful. Now this is the tricky part. We're going to bring that right foot so that it's kind of perpendicular to the left heel. And you want to lift yourself up so that your left hand is right inside the left shin. And then you're going to extend the right arm up. Pressing through that right heel. Feel that line of energy through the crown of the head. Palms open. Again, you're anchored. So there's a natural polarity, an evenness. So we release the reaction, we're not past our edge, and we relax in the heart center. Pressing through both feet, inhale all the way back, five-pointed star. And then the victory squat. steady position. Checking on your breath. And then we're going to press uh, the left foot to meet the right. Come back into temple. This time we're moving to the left side. 
So pressing down through the right foot, extending the right hip to the side, lengthening out through the fingertips. Arms drawn close to the ears. And then press with your both feet, inhale back from center, all the way to the side. Back into center. And we're going to bring the hands all the way down, exhaling. Notice if there's a contraction in the lower body. Is there a contraction in the center of the chest? Slow motion helps us to breathe and relax into those areas of holding. Helps us to let go of reaction, to relax into the heart center and allow energy to move from the lower centers upwards. Instead of getting stuck in the lower center, survival instincts. Bring the palms together. Let's bring them all the way back up again. Interlace the fingers into temple. We're going to go through that one more time. This time, starting on the left side, pressing the hip to the right, extend the torso to the left. Firming through the buttocks and inner thighs, inhale back through center, exhale to the right. Press into the left foot, press into the left hip, extending to the left fingertips. Again, evenness to the pose. Inhale back through center, we're going to step the left foot out into that beautiful victory goddess or god. Again, nice steadiness here. You can tell if you're steady, checking on your breath. There's an evenness of breathing. If it's labored, you need to back up a little bit, make a subtle adjustment so that energy flow is moving up. It's not contracted by the psoas muscle or the heart. Pressing down into the feet, we're going to turn the toes so they're pointing to the front. Extend the arms out to the side, five-pointed star. And that energy flow is moving up and out through the fingertips and the crown of the head. And balanced in polarity. Now I'm going to pivot on my left foot here, moving to Trikonasana. The hips go to the right, the fingertips to the left. And then I'm going to rotate my arms, bringing the left hand to the inside of the left shin, right hand up. That openness through the center of the chest. Even though I'm stretching the psoas here, it's like contraction here, just phys uh, physically or physiologically. And I'm going to begin to rotate now towards the left foot. I'm going to walk my right foot in a touch. Make the subtle adjustment through the hips, through the legs. From that level position, again, I'm maintaining that polarity from the base to the crown so that I'm not contracting at the psoas in fight or flight, and I'm not overextending myself or creating contractions at the center of the chest. There's an evenness. So that I'm in balance. Now I'm gonna slide my right leg back, moving into a runner's lunge, pressing back through that right foot, extending forward, sternum and crown. And I don't really have to do anything to, to create that polarity. It happens naturally, but when my mind comes in and starts judging or labeling, that's where the duality arises. That's where that reaction arises. So as soon as I catch that, I just reset back into polarity, and then I notice a release and an openness. A release in the lower center is an openness in the upper centers. Pivoting now, bringing the right hand, the hands towards the front of the mat again. Left knee is bent, right leg is straight. Hands are underneath the shoulders. Side lunge.
And then I'm going to find my way towards a goddess pose, bringing the feet together, dropping the sits bones down, the hips are open. The whole time I'm keeping my attention on balance, on the poles, the base and the crown gaze. And just a, an evenness between the two so that that subtle bridge between the solar plexus and the heart center, there's just a natural flood of energy moving upwards. Again, I'm not contracted in the, in the lower centers. Like I'm not afraid, I'm not in fight or flight. And I'm not like, oh, I have no boundaries. I'm just, there's just an evenness. There's just a balance there, okay? So I'm just here right now. And I'm inviting that for you. I'm inviting you to just be here now. It's the only place you exist. Notice how as soon as you become here, like attentive to being here now, that fight or flight response starts to release because we're not afraid of anything that we're imagining or that we've experienced from the past. Okay. And we're not collapsed in the center of the chest. And we can feel our breath instantly. We go right to breath. And then there's just an ease in the center of the chest, the heart center. And you may even notice more heat moving or more energy sensations moving up through the throat, maybe right up to the third eye center, maybe right up to the crown gate. Bringing the hands to the floor again, we're going to move towards a side lunge on the right side. Right knee bent, left leg straight, extending through the spine. And then we're going to exhale and turn towards the right side, runner's lunge. Breath into the left heel, extending through the crown of the head. Slowly walking that left foot in, leveling the hips, moving towards a straight leg runner stretch. Again, that evenness between the poles, the base and the crown. And then preparing that left foot for trikonasana. So the right heel intersects the arch, and then we're going to begin to open up the torso. Bring the right palm down and the left arm up. That steady position. It's natural for you to take the gaze towards the ceiling. You can do that. If you're struggling or straining here, you're in that fight or flight response. Back up, come to a place where you can remain steady, balanced, in polarity. Beautiful. We're going to press the both feet. Inhale all the way up. Five pointed star. Exhale into the victory position. Victorious. Jab with one. And then we're going to step the feet together. Again, moving into half moon. This time to the right. Maintaining that extension as you press to the left foot, hip to the left. Feel the left side. Press with your both feet, inhale through center. Pressing down to the right foot, hip to the right. Extending the torso to the left. Press with your both feet, inhale. Back through center, we're going to press the hip forward, lift and extend the sternum. Into a gentle back bend. And then coming back through center, just allow the hands to begin to float 
down alongside the body. Breathing fully. Noticing as you attend to the lower centers, releasing reaction here in the fight or flight response, neutralizing the psoas muscle. Notice how that energy is free to move up towards the center of the chest, the heart center, evolutionary centers, spirituality, love. Yourself. Oneness. Notice how the hands begin to find their way to the sides and to stay connected to the release of sensation in the body. Second half of the posture. And we merge into oneness. Bending the mind, watching, observing, resting. And then gradually opening the gates. And we're going to get to find our way back down towards the floor. So however you want to find your way there. Go ahead and begin to move yourself so that you're moving towards the floor. I'm just going to again shift this camera. As you find your way to the floor, just take a moment and close your eyes. Notice what's happening as you're simply sitting here. Maybe you feel lots of tingling and vibration through the system. Heat, coolness, throbbing. Where do you feel a holding? Where do you feel an openness? And see if you can kind of rest in that neutral position where you feel that balance of the polarity of the base of the spine, crown gate. Feeling the softening of the, you know, the fight or flight response of the psoas muscle where we kind of go past the edge and into reaction. Feeling the breath as it massages not only the organs, but also the, the psoas muscle. And that quantum shift, that leap from uh, the solar plexus to the heart center, just crossing the bridge, that subtle bridge between the two, as we move from that survival instinct to the evolutionary forces grace, gratitude, love. And again, we don't have to do anything to make that happen. Just simply relax and let go. Breath, and that's it. I'm going to invite you to lay on your abdomen. Uh, we're going to, actually, I changed my mind. We're going to lay on our back, okay? So lay on your back. And if you have your strap handy, I'm going to invite you to uh, grab onto it. I actually didn't grab my strap, but I can show you what I'm going to do. We're going to lay on the back, walk the feet in. We're going to start with just um, half the strap next to you. And then bring your right knee in towards the chest. And as the right knee is into the chest, we're going to slide the left leg along the ground, but let it be just kind of hovering about an inch off the floor. 
So the left leg is extended an inch off the floor. The right knee is drawn in towards the chest. Now we're going to switch. We're going to bring the left knee into the chest, the right leg extending out, but it's hovering over the floor. This is the psoas release. We're going to switch again, right knee in, left leg extends. And then left knee and right leg extend. Both knees in. And then bring both feet to the floor. I'm going to drop the right leg down into a half butterfly. The left foot is flat on the floor. The feet are touching on the side. My hands are out to the side. It's kind of like a half bridge, half butterfly. My gaze is right to the ceiling. I'm going to press into the left foot, and I'm going to lift the left hip off the ground. What happens next is the right knee begins to drop towards the floor. So I begin to lift the left hip into a bridge position. The right leg drops towards the floor into butterfly. And that's stretching out. The psoas on the right side and the left side. I'm going to lower. I'm going to switch. Now the left or the right foot comes flat to the floor, the left foot alongside it. Pressing into the right foot, lifting the right hip. The left knee naturally drops towards the ground. This is also opening up through the chest and the heart center, also stimulating the breathing pattern with the diaphragm. And I'm going to lower down. I'm going to move into that one more time on each side. Lifting the left hip. Right leg drops. Lowering down. Now the reason I'm not holding very long is because I don't want to create Contraction, right? So I'm just lifting to that edge, breathing there for a couple, and then lowering back down. Switching. And then lowering down. I think one more time. What do you think? Feels right. Feels right. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, lift. Left side is folding towards the floor, right hip lifting towards the ceiling, and then back down to center. Okay, go ahead and let your body respond as it needs to for balance and harmony. Whatever feels natural is calling for you right now. Now go ahead and Extend the left leg. We're going to bring the tie. We're going to wrap it over the ball of the right foot, okay? You're holding on to your tie. I have an imaginary tie. I'm just going to draw the toes towards the head as I extend that left leg. The left leg is on the floor. Okay. Try to keep your legs as straight as possible and relax your hands so you're not gripping uh, your, your tie with your hands. Now I'm going to hold onto the tie with my right hand and bring my left hand down to my left hip. And I'm slowly going to open that right leg out to the side. I'm going slow. I'm not going to what I think is my flexibility. I'm attuning to where I feel that tender spot or that kind of, kind of that uh, retraction or resistance. For me, it's here. Yes, I can go all the way out, but I'm actually wanting to kind of rest on that first edge, that first place where I feel a little bit of wobbliness, a little bit of agitation, okay? I want to stop there. And that's it. Good. And then I'm going to come back through center. I'm going to hold on to the tie with the left hand. 
I'm going to allow my right hand to go down to the floor, and I'm going to slowly anchor with my right hand and allow my right leg to cross over. Same thing. I've got lots of flexibility in my hips and my legs, but I'm only going to go to where I feel a little bit of contraction, and I feel it here now, just on the outer leg and actually behind the knee into the inner groin area. That's as far as I'm going. I'm not going all the way over, okay, because I want to stay connected to the psoas muscles. I'm just going here. I'm going to bring my leg back through center, draw the toes towards the head. Switch the tie, open out to the right side a little bit, holding on, pressing down through my left hip so I remain anchored. Just to that place where I feel a little bit of activation. And I want to go past my edge. But I want to get like snugly up against it. And then slowly coming back, switching the tie into the left hand. Right hand comes down to the floor. That's my anchor. Slowly crossing over just to where I feel that activation. So I want to be able to breathe here, the diaphragm massaging the organs and the psoas. My heart remains open under more conditions, with less conditions. And then back into center. I'm going to release the tie. I'm going to allow my right leg to find its way towards the floor nice and slowly. Remain balanced in the polarity. Notice that flood of energy, the release of sensation from the right leg all the way up to the right side of the body. You may even feel like your right leg has kind of melted into the earth. It may feel alive with sensation. And when you feel that flood has passed, go ahead and bend the left leg. Bring the tie around the ball of the left foot, holding onto the tie loosely with your hands, but enough that you can support yourself. Draw the toes towards the head. Holding on with the left Hand only, right hand onto the hip, allowing the left leg to open to the side. Relax the shoulders, relax the jaw. You're just going to that place where it's not your full range of motion, just to that first point of resistance. That's the, where the sweet spot is. That's where that reactive pattern kind of rises up and you want to be able to not go past it and not kind of get caught in it. Because we're resting in polarity, right? Coming back through center. Switching hands. Left hand is going to go down to the floor. That's your anchor. Right hand is going to help the left leg be guided to where it needs to stop. And again, it's not your full range of motion. You'll feel tenderness on the left uh, the IT band probably from the glute of the piriformis, maybe even behind the leg or in the in the psoas here. You want to be able to breathe and still kind of feel some sensation and remain open under more conditions with less conditions, balanced in polarity. Coming back through one more time. Toes towards the head. Releasing, opening the left leg up to the side again, just to where you feel that stop point. That stop point, it's a little hard to hold it there. That's, that's the point of it. <laughs> Good. And then coming back through center, switching hands, left arm goes down to the mat. Right leg crosses over, or sorry, left leg crosses over just again to that stop point. Breathing fully, easefully relaxed, balanced in polarity. 
and back through center. Turn with the head. Release the thigh. Allow the left leg to begin to find its way, journeying all the way back to the floor, floating through space. Relax as much as you can. Anchored in breath. Notice the release of sensations in the body as the left leg finds its way, its way to the floor. Merging here into oneness as you feel that flood of energy rising up through the torso, filling you all the way. Draw your attention to the spot between the eyebrows. And drop here into the deepest stillness at the third eye center. And do absolutely nothing from now on. Simply relax. the breath moving through the body as you rest here in Shavasana. Completely balanced. body being breathed. There is no separation. yourself to be filled with the grace that is the carrier of gratitude. Allow yourself to begin to rise into the surface of awareness. Rolling over onto your right side, resting there in the womb of existence, held, balanced.
gradually find your way upright to a comfortable seated position, allowing a portion of yourself to remain anchored in this deep recognizable stillness as a portion of yourself begins to come back into the body. Balanced in the polarity of the lower center to the survival instinct and the evolutionary forces Dara and the high center of the Sahasara crown gate. And know that anytime you find yourself in reaction, you are empowered to replace it with gratitude. And that is the bridge that moves to the subtle solar plexus heart center. us from that survival level instinct to peace and contentment. It naturally moves that the energy that would go down and out to float to the center of the chest, palm over palm. Actually bring one hand down to the lower center of the diaphragm. So one in the diaphragmic area, one in the center of the chest. So that you sense that balancing, that full, whole, and with the poles, the base, and the crown. And let's chant the sound of home together. Let's take a deep breath in. Shanti, healing and ease. Healing, not that you need to heal anything, but when we rest in the center, when we rest in the heart center, when we rest in that polarity, when we know ourselves as full, whole, and complete, there is peace. 